Lesson 11. You will never matter if you can't prove your worth. Which, in the year 2070... Explosive rap against the desk, and he flinches instinctually, claws curling into his palms, because that means another five repetitions. Takes a deep breath as she orders. Again! The Gilded Alliance was a multi-tiered treaty and trade negotiation pact between the Emperor Giron Caesodius, first of his name, the Great Unifier, the 85th Sun King, 6th Emperor of Nerox. Rambo has to take a sip of air after that, back ramrod straight and starting to hurt from staying so still, toes flexing in his boots out of discomfort. And King Zephyr, second of his name, All-Father, Bridge Builder, Ruler of the End and All Things Beyond. Flash of indigo as she passes by, hands tucked neatly behind her back, claws draped loosely over the riding crop, but it stays still, and Rambu relaxes for a second. Good. You're doing good. Just keep going. Wets his lips and begins the next line. Signed and ratified on star date 60 of the Imperial Year 2022, the treaty would bring Voidfall and the Ender into the Empire proper as citizens of class and distinction. The ensuing benefits from this decision were far-reaching and impactful, improving the lives of not only all those here on Anwell, but also all those out in the greater empire. He says a little more confidently, tipping his chin up in pride because he's been doing better. His voice steadier recently, but then his head suddenly swims and he stumbles on, ushering in a new era of peace and prosperity. The word hasn't even fully left his mouth before the crack of the riding crop striking a wooden surface rings out. And Rambu doesn't flinch this time, Stay still, despite how his vision wavers, and he begins to despair as Maliri barks. Again! Rambu grits his teeth and takes a shaky breath, internal clock telling him it's been three hours now. And he's so tired. Wishes he was allowed to roll his aching shoulders as he begins again. The Gilded Alliance was a multi-tiered treaty and trade negotiation pact between Emperor Chiron Kiso... Sharp crack behind him. Keep yourself still. Don't move a muscle. Nothing allowed to show through. So much steel and fire in her voice as she demands. Again. The Gilded Alliance was a multi-tiered treaty and trade negotiation pact between Emperor Hieron Caesodius, first of his name, the Great Unifier, the 86th Sun King... Crack. What's wrong with you? 85th. Get it right this time. Now again. The Gilded Alliance was a... Crack. Why can't you pay attention? Again. The Gilded Alliance was... Crack. Why can't you listen? Again. The Gilded... Uh, um... Was... A, a, a alliance that was... Was... Crack. Why can't you learn? Incompetent. Unfortunate. A disgrace. Again was a, a, a multi multi tiered treaty that um that uh that that stupid useless little shadow if you left no one would miss you good riddance enough maliri roars and rambu clicks his mouth shut immediately cowering into his shoulders as she goes storming past everything about her so eerily still and unnatural no emotion in her face or body or voice, like she's carved from the same black stone as the palace, unrelenting and unforgiving and cold. I'm sorry, Rambu mumbles, ducking his head to stare at his feet, hands clenched painfully at his sides, infuriated with himself that he can't say one passage clearly. Stupid tongue keeps tripping him and getting caught on words. He stops breathing when there's the chilly, smooth press of the crop under his jaw, goes boneless, and lets his head be tipped back, forced to meet Maliri's searing green eyes. A prince does not mumble, she orders, glaring down the length of her nose at him, and Rambu fights the urge to shrink back, cowering under her in the hopes that she'll loosen up. She never does.
nor does he apologize. Do I make myself clear, your highness? She always calls him by his proper title, gives him all the respect he deserves as a prince, but for some reason, Rambu can never shake the feeling that it's not praise, that it's out of contempt. Swallows hard and blessedly says, even, Yes, ma'am. Good. Now begin from the top again, and do not falter. It's unbecoming for someone of your station. Maliri says, pulling back and tucking her crop behind her. Resumes pacing around him, swatting at his hunched back until he straightens his creaking joints out. Squares his aching shoulders, and Rambu takes a deep breath to begin. The Gilded Alliance... He wants to cry, hearing the crop slam down into a desk, rattling the contents inside. Bites his lip hard to get himself back under control as Maliri says, This is not even a hard passage, your highness, and yet you persist in this stuttering. I I'm trying, Rambu cries, tail snapping to coil around his leg when she whirls in front of him, eyebrows up to her hairline at him speaking without being addressed. And Rambu figures he's already in hot water. Can't make it worse to ask. C could we resume in the morning? I I'm so tired, governess, and I, I think that I do not care what you think. You are not dismissed until your lesson is complete, do you understand? Maliri says, stalking up to him with narrowed green eyes, looming over him like everyone always does. Forces Rambu to hunch into himself trying to get away. Do you think you deserve special treatment? Is that it? All of your siblings completed their lessons without a problem, but it is only you that struggles so. Rambu winces. Has to break eye contact because he knows, okay? He knows he's the worst out of all of them. The youngest, the weakest, the dumbest. Can't do half the things they can. Can't speak evenly. Struggles to organize his thoughts. He's a disappointment. He knows he is. Knows that's why father won't see him as much and works to remember who he is. Why the others pick on him sometimes. And Rambu wilts under Maliri's glare, under the pressure. Flinches when she clicks her tongue. You are almost eleven. You are too old to be behaving like this. In less than four years you will be making your debut at court, and what will everyone say? What will they think? Hearing a prince talk like you do. Maliri chides and she's always been his harshest critic, the one with the toughest standards. And Rambu just wants to make her proud, wants to make them all proud. That's all he's ever wanted. Your performance and actions speak directly on behalf of your family, and you do them a disservice by acting like you do. You will complete the lesson in its entirety. Do I make myself clear? Yes, ma'am. Rambu whispers, Claws biting into his palms until it hurts. Cool trickle pricking under them. But it keeps his back straight and his mouth shut until Maliri steps away. Stays in front of him this time as she orders. Good. Now begin. As he sucks in a chattering inhale, imagines closing a door against everything. All of the pressure and the fears and the disappointments in father's gaze. The nightmare of it being in Mama's? Resha's flawless speech and slitted green eyes, her pointy nails digging into his collar as she points at his reflection. Something not right with you, and everyone can see it, little brother. Shuts it all away, and starts. The Gilded Alliance was a multi-tier treaty and trade negotiation pact. Rambu isn't allowed to go to bed for another hour, but he gets through the whole passage. Maliri nods her head in approval as he's being escorted to his rooms by the guards, and Rambu wants so desperately to feel something. But he doesn't. Stumbles out of the study like he's already asleep, dead to the world, blank nothingness dripping down from his chest like sand slipping off the parapets. And he hunches into himself the next morning when he wakes up, and it's still there. Ronbu slips quietly out of the bedroom, bare feet soundless on the wooden floorboards as he eases the door shut behind him. Has years of practice at it, knows exactly how much force to use and which way to turn the knob for it to close silently. Tebo's still knocked out, 
should be up soon, given his general sleeping habits. And Rambu would have been more than happy carting through his hair until then, but he can tell he's getting dehydrated. Higher temperatures always make his body process liquids faster, burning through what he has in a fraction of the time as it would on Anwil, leaving him susceptible to heat exhaustion and heat stroke. And after his experience on that sandy shithole, Rambu's been hyper-aware of making sure he has enough fluids ever since. He steps softly down the hallway, late afternoon sunlight streaming in through the open doorways where the rooms brush against the outside. But the rest of the house is underground and pleasantly dark. Feels like a nice balm against his itchy eyes. Unfortunately, the ceilings are low, but that's to be expected. Sturdy wooden beams crisscrossing over his head and supporting the sloped roof. More beams framing the walls with what looks like earthen plaster in between. It's very countryside, very humble. And a part of his mind wrinkles its nose at the hand-hewn furniture, the quaint decorations and simple materials. But as soon as Ronbu has the thought, he immediately feels like shit. Sinks his claws into his bracelet. Fuck's wrong with you. This is their home, and it's perfectly lovely. It's clean and well taken care of. You're just spoiled and entitled. Rambu berates himself miserably. Hanging his head. Doesn't know why he's still like this. Thought he'd be better by now. He'd honestly take whatever he could get. Just some small confirmation that he is getting better. That it's not always going to be like this. That he's going to be able to change. That's what has been scaring Ronbu the most. The fear that this is all there is. That whatever Tubbo sees in him is a lie. And that at his core, this is it. Who he really is. Corrupted fruit and everything after all, he sighs. Lip pulling back in a snarl. Rocks his head to the side and catches a section of the hallway that's decorated in mismatched frames. Ronbu takes half a step closer, despite himself. Snarl, twitching up into more of an honest smile, seeing a grainy picture of what has to be Tubbo as a child, standing in between Sisson and his father, band-aids slapped across his face as he holds up some ribbon triumphantly. Moving slowly down the line, Rambu goes through each one, fondness burning bright in his chest at catching a glimpse into Tubbo's childhood smiling at images of him hanging upside down from trees and clustered with a dozen other children, gap-toothed grins that begin to fill in but never lose the dimples to either side. There's one near the end he pauses at for a long time. Looks more recent, likely taken in the last year or so. Tubbo sitting at a table with a huge crowd of people around him that all have the same mischievous smiles and dark hair. Messily iced cake in front of him with a score of candles in it, dorkily-looking party hat caught between his antenna, but he's grinning wide at the camera, may or may not be subtly flipping it off, and Rambu's heart lurches. Ancients, how do I keep finding ways to love him more? He thinks despairingly. Has to physically stop himself from reaching out and stroking adoring fingers across the glass of the picture frame. Mutters, in no way serious at the smirking image. Fuck you, dickhead. He gets that a lot, actually. And Rambu nearly jumps out of his skin, bangs his head hard on the rafters and falls back with a squawk, groans as he rubs the sore spot to the top of his forehead and squints at where Sisson has scrambled out of her chair, rushed off further into the kitchen and wants nothing more than to sink down into the floor and never come back up. Fuck shit, hell, ancients of the fucking cursed deep. What's wrong with you? Look like an idiot. Look insane. Why do you react like that? What's she gonna think? Fuck, head hurts. Oh, you're such a moron. Sisson comes darting out into the hallway a second later, with a towel-wrapped bundle in her lower set of hands. Drops down next to him in a puddle of skirts and hands the parcel to him. Oh, so sorry, Melly. Didn't think I'd spook you that bad. How's your head? Are you okay? Not wanting to be ungrateful, Rambu takes the towel and feels a lukewarm heft to it. Could barely be considered chilly. And figures she's gotten something out of the freezer for him to reduce the swelling. Presses it to his forehead 
and winces at the sting from the condensation against his skin. Oh, I'm so sorry, is it that bad? I... Sisson starts again, and Rambu doesn't want to make her feel worse, interrupts gently to try and assuage her concerns. No, no, I'm okay. Sorry, shouldn't have overreacted, that's on me, really. I just hope I didn't damage anything. Ah, uh, <laughs> if anyone's breaking something round here with their thick skull, it's bow, not you, Melly. Sisson tells him with a laugh, reaches out carefully and pats him on the shoulder, smiles when Rambu turns to look at her. Well, let me make you some tea, at least. Always good for soothing aches and pains. Shit, how is Rambu supposed to get out of this without offending her? What little moisture is collecting from the towel is already burning his skin, so whatever the pH of the water here is, he's for sure not going to be able to drink it. But turning down her kind overture would be seen as rude and snobbish, and Rambu can't do that. But he's also not an idiot, doesn't want to tear his stomach lining open. Fuck, he's in a bind. And Sisson is starting to look at him weird awkwardly retracting her hand, so he's got to say something. Swallows past the panic rattling around in his throat, and remembers Tubbo looking at him in the Asachi. You're not your family. You are not your family. Clutches it to his chest like a shield as he tries to evenly say, I, I, thank you, um, thank you very much, but, um, but, but while your offer is greatly uh, appreciated, I don't think I can, um, can drink any of the water here safely. I mean, disgrace. Can't even get one sentence out. Waste of my time. Waste of everyone's. Unteachable. Can't learn a lost cause. She tells him in her cold, cold voice, like the wailing of the wind up on Voidfall's parapets. And Rambu refuses to look at her, but he can see her looming behind Sisson riding crop in hand, and dark purple of her dress flowing to the floor. You're a miserable excuse for a prince, and a black mark on the ledger of your entire family, do you know that? I do. Rambu whispers dejectedly. Feels like he's sitting back in the study, a lot smaller than he is now, but made even smaller by her nasty eyes and sharp tongue. Blinks in confusion, then when he hears a warm and kind and gentle. I know, but I have some with a lower pH. 3.5, right? That's what Tubbo told me to get, at least, so blame him if it's wrong. Wait, what? Not a problem. Not offended. Not upset. But you refused. You stuttered. You're a mess. Went out of their way for you. No things about you. Whoever pays attention to you, he does. He always has. Love him. It's right. Rambu murmurs quietly, staring at her with wide eyes, and Sisson smiles at him, dimples in her cheeks while she offers a hand out to help him up. Nothing behind her but the sunny little kitchen, as she says, Good then. Now do you like fruit teas or leaf teas better? Rambu gets directed to the long table that runs the length of the whole kitchen, pulls a chair out quietly and sits down, Sets his soggy towel bundle off to the side before he accidentally gives himself chemical burns, and quickly glances around the room. There's a wood-burning oven Sisson strings a kettle out over, soot-stained tile backsplash decorated in blue and yellow geometric designs. Pots and pans neatly hung up to either side, along with ropes of dried herbs. Rest of the space filled with cabinets and cupboards. Rusted-out icebox wheezing in the corner. It feels cozy. The space crowded and cluttered with things, nothing like the soaring ceilings and wide-open spaces of Voidfall, where it felt like Rambu was always one misstep away from going sailing off into empty air. He doesn't feel like that here. Thinks he'd be able to hook an arm around something if he started drifting away. The close, choked feeling of everything wrapping around him like a hug. Like fire-bright arms and tickling antenna and words whispered only for his ears. Flexing his toes against the worn floorboards, Rambu doesn't really know what to call the warm, heavy feeling pinning his limbs down. Gentle buzzing in his head, lulled into something almost hypnotic, 
like he could curl up right here and take a nap, and everything would be okay. So, Bo tells me you're an excellent moxman, Sisson says over her shoulder while she's getting mugs down. And Rambu shrugs, even though she can't see him, awkwardly skitters his eyes to the side and bites back the urge to argue that he's not. Still a little jumpy whenever anyone compliments him. I'm decent, I suppose. Still have a lot I need to get better at. I understand that. But you'll get there, Melly. Bo crashed the first few times he flew, and now look at him. Can't tear him from his ship. Sisson laughs, clinking ceramic together as she adds a generous amount of honey to her mug, about to do the same to his, and pauses at the last minute. Oh, do you like sweeteners in your tea? Sorry, Habit. Yes, please. Rambu says softly, hands twisted up together in his lap, fingers nervously picking at one another, not sure what the protocol is on if he can ask questions or not. But he really, really wants to. Watches her back in trepidation, trying to work up the courage. It's okay. It's not like there. You're fine. You're an adult. You can do this. Just breathe and open your mouth. But it's so hard to get words out. At least until Sisson turns around, mugs in hand, and it feels like something loosens in Rambu's chest, seeing her eyes flit to his. Um, Tubbo really crashed? W when he was younger? Hmm? Oh, yeah. All the time. She sighs fondly, settling down at the table across from him, and slides across a pale green mug with bright yellow flowers. I knew how much he wanted to be a pilot, but Queen's past. That boy really sent me through the ringer. I don't know how many times he took the crop duster down before he finally got the hang of it. Rambu gets a really clear mental image, then. Young Tubbo, with band-aids stuck all over him from previous crashes, standing in front of the wrecked ship, and vehemently arguing that it wasn't his fault. And Rambu huffs out a laugh, blowing gently on his tea to cool it. He sounds like he was a handful. Oh, you have no idea, and I have four of them. Sisson jokes, waving her upper set of hands around, and Rambu chokes on his sip of tea. Only thing stopping him from spitting it out... Years of table manner etiquette training. He swallows his burning mouthful and sputters out an unrestrained laugh, chest hurting from the mixed abuse of almost choking and the rough laughter. Sitting with Sisson turns out to be really easy, almost scarily so, because so many of her mannerisms and patterns of speech are just like her son. And Rambu finds himself relaxing quickly, almost too much has to bite back snarky comments and snippy insults pretty frequently. He drinks his tea and listens to her stories, asking questions here and there, warmth blooming to life in his veins when she answers him every time. Never gives short responses either, always makes sure to fully explain everything. Oh, so the use of hammocks or strung cloth bedding is just a holdover from pre-agricultural times when hunting... Er, I guess just gathering was the main source of providing sustenance. Rambu says, wiggling a little in his seat, ears perked up in interest. Huh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Especially considering what you were saying about how early Melifera usually took up residency in densely forested areas to avoid predators. Wait, so why the transition from arboreal living to subterranean is it- Queens, you such a dork mumbles from the doorway to the kitchen, and Rambu swings fast in that direction, tail flicking behind him as he mock glares at a sleep-rumpled Tubbo, braces a hand on his chest, and declares, haughty, Oh, I'm the dork? Well, excuse me for actually trying to expand my knowledge base. But then again, what can I expect from a person that crashed their crop duster four times? Ah, ma! Tubbo whines, shuffling into the kitchen with his head tipped back in despair. And instead of going around to her side of the table, he drops heavily into the chair next to Ronbu, accidentally knocks their knees together. Why'd you, you tell him that? Because it's funny, Sisson says, unrepentant, takes a very elegant sip of her tea, and generally acts apathetic to where Tubbo is whining incoherently about abuse. And maybe, 
If you hadn't crashed our duster four times, this wouldn't be happening. I fixed it, Tubbo defends, sitting up a little straighter, and in the process, presses his leg against Ronbu's under the table. At the feeling of warm body heat leaching into him, Ronbu's eyes slit half-lidded automatically, and he presses back for a second, reveling in how Tubbo seems to do the same. But then he remembers where he is, who he is, what they're not, and jerks away like he's been burned. Come on, get it together. He doesn't love you. Isn't going to. You're not Karyads. Can't do things like this. Rambu busies himself with the last of his tea. Can't look over at Tubbo, even though he sees him glance his way out of the corner of his eye. Heart tripping a bit over, what's that look for? Maybe he wants... No way. Not possible. But maybe. Maybe it could be. But it's not. No one's ever going to love you. You're insane, for starters, and a failure after that. Don't need to keep that bead, since you're never going to have someone. Rambu's claws clink against his mug, as all the hair raises on the back of his neck. Vividly feels like she's standing behind him. Sharp bite of her nails needling at his shoulder. Give it over, little brother, and it will all stop. Don't you want it to be over? Know how you look out windows off ledges. It'll all be over if you just... Give in. No, it won't. You're lying. That's all you do. Rambu snaps back at her. Thumb running careful shapes over the sunny flowers on his mug. Counting the petals that frame their dark centers. Tries to ignore it when she simpers. If that's the case, then we're the same, little brother. And his heart constricts. How does it feel? She whispers leaning down closer to his ear, cloying, overwhelming scent of her perfume everywhere, knowing we're just alike. And Rambu can't stop his body from twitching when he feels the long, silky strands of her hair tickling at the shell of his ear, knowing that you grew up to be me. Breath catching short in his lungs, because she's wrong, she's wrong, she's wrong, she's wrong, but you know I'm not. Stop lying to yourself, Ron. There's something warm touching his leg, an ankle hooking around his, dragging him closer, and it's, you are not your family, and glad you came, and boo, my boo. And Rambu blinks back to himself, to the worn kitchen table, and the mug with the little yellow flowers he likes, soft conversation carrying on around him. His hands shake as he tucks them out of sight right one worrying at the bracelet around his left, takes a few deep, even breaths like he was taught, so that it's not obvious how fast his heart is going, methodically goes through and closes the doors in his head that had creaked open while he was... gone. And when Rambu feels like he has a handle on himself again, he goes to untangle he and Tubbo's legs, but Tubbo only worms closer, keeps moving his foot back around Ronbu's in a test of wills that eventually leads to them kicking at each other. Something that's super obvious, but that Sisson ignores with well-practiced ease. Bo, you know, if you want to make it to any of the games, you should head out soon. It's almost six. Sisson says mildly, over Tubbo muttering furious curses as Ronbu pins his left leg up against the top of the table. Turns to his mother and lets his leg go slack the sudden lack of pressure making Rambu smash his knee into the table. Oh shit, really? Boo, how long did you let me sleep for? Why didn't you wake me up? Rambu's rubbing at his abused knee, when Tubbo flips to glare at him plaintively, looking very indignant and scandalized, like it isn't the worst ordeal in the world trying to get him up out of bed. And Rambu's eyes narrow because the audacity of this idiot. Huffs. You ever try waking yourself up? I could throw a brick at you and you'd sleep through it. What? Tubbo cries, completely drowned out by Sisson's cackling, and she hunches over the table, arm braced against it to keep her upright as she wheezes. Oh, Melly, I like him. Why haven't you brought him around sooner? Probably because he was afraid of getting roasted to death. Rambu says automatically. Forgot for a second he's talking to Tubbo's mother. But before he can apologize profusely, Sisson laughs again. 
grins at him sharp and well-meaning. It's what he gets for crashing my duster all those times. I regret everything, Tubba mutters, halfway slid down in his chair, looking silly and grumpy, with his antenna twitched flat out to the side in irritation. And Rambu can't help giggling at him, leans over and whispers conspiratorially, You know, if you hadn't crashed the duster, I am leaving! Fuck the both of you! Tubba pushes back from the table dramatically, but doesn't get up, sits there and rolls his eyes, as Sisson and Rambu laugh at his expense. Rambu's laughter tapering off a little when she holds out a hand to him, wiggles it to get her point across, and he very carefully high-fives their palms together, smiles hesitantly at her when she grins at him. They all get up from the table at the same time, Sisson assuring him it's fine that she does the dishes since, you know, safety hazard and everything. Tells him and Tubbo to go get ready while she's cleaning up. Tubbo disappears into his room, leaving Rambu alone out in the hallway, not really sure what he's supposed to be doing to get ready. He fiddles with his hair in a hallway mirror, but it flies every which way, and he stops with a sigh, darting his eyes away before he can really register the stump sticking out of the top of his head. Raking a nervous hand through his hair, Rambu lets it fall back and partially cover his right eye. Hates that it had to be his right horn they snapped off. Glancing back at his reflection, then, mismatched eyes, wispy scars on your neck, only one proper horn left, and Rambu feels his lips pull up in an unpleasant snarl, baring his fangs at the ugly image, nasty red eye on the left and shorn stump on the right, neither side looking properly ender anymore fitting. I guess the outsides match the insides, he thinks despairingly, turning his back on the sight. Feels something damp nose at his fingers and looks down in confusion until he sees Benson standing there, fluffy butt wiggling fast. You like seeing me, though, hmm? Rambu coos, crouching down to better scratch between his fuzzy ears. Gets a long swipe of a black tongue against his face for his efforts. I'll take that as a yes. And thanks, not many people do, you know. Benson tips his head to the side, yellow markings on his pointed face making it look like he has little eyebrows, and Rambu pretends they're drawn down in understanding, brushes his hand along the bombini's soft coat. I kind of suck, Benson. But you like me anyway, right? It's sort of depressing, but he takes it as an affirmation when Benson just wiggles harder squirming past Ranbu's hand and in between his legs, nearly takes him over again trying to get closer. And he laughs softly, clears his throat, which had gone a little rough, and gets to his feet with one last pet on Benson's head. Thanks. A door creaks open behind him, and Ranbu turns around to see Tubbo coming out of his room, now in a loose-fitting, airy-looking linen shirt with rich embroidery around the high neckline. Dark red pants cinched just under his knees, with more stitched detail around the cuffs. Small pom-poms hanging off the ties. And when he looks up, at Ronbu, his eyebrows draw down. Storm on the horizon. Dude, you're not seriously gonna wear long pants, Tebo says, fiddling with the buttons on one of his shirt sleeves. And Ronbu shrugs, picks self-consciously at his bomber. It's not like I have anything else. What? I told you before we left it was going to be like 32 degrees. Why didn't you pack shorts? Tubbo bitches. Wrapping a bare foot into the floor and just thinking about himself in shorts as Rambu's lip pulling back in a grimace. Tail snapping behind him indignantly. I don't own shorts. They're completely undignified. Queens of fucking ages past. Rambu. You're an endothermic species from a frozen planet. You're going to get fucking heat stroke again if you don't. I had something to drink earlier. I'll be fine. That's not. No. How is that going to help a few hours from now? Just borrow something of mine. No, I'm not wearing shorts. They look stupid. Rambu, I swear to the queens, if you don't. How about a skirt? Rambu spins around with his mouth still open, clicks it shut, seeing Sisson leaning against the wall with an indulgent smile on her face, arms folded across her chest is about to tell her he's really going to be fine when he hears Tubbo scoff, like he knows Rambu's going to refuse. 
and then all bets are off. That would be lovely. Thank you, Sisson. He says as politely as he can out of spite. Follows after her with his tail swishing in victory, listening to how Tubbo sputters behind him. Realizes maybe he didn't really think this through well enough when Sisson starts pulling clothes out of her wardrobe. Somehow, it didn't occur to Rondu that he would be borrowing her personal things. Suddenly feels very guilty, perched awkwardly in the doorway to her bedroom. Claws sinking into his bracelet because the pressure is mounting. Mind working itself into snarls, showing him all the ways he could damage or ruin her possessions. What were you thinking, acting like you belong here, like you're familiar enough to request these kinds of favors? She was probably just offering out of principle, but now you've gone and accepted, like an entitled, self-absorbed, elitist, spoiled brat, imperial dog, sympathizer. Well, they might be a little short on you, Krorito, but they should fit. Sisson says, laying another option out on her bed, lower set of hands brushing wrinkles out of the sky-blue material. Turns to look at his frozen form in the doorway, and smiles kindly. So, have a favorite color? He can answer that. He knows the answer to that. He can be good, he can behave, know how to act. Hoarsely says, Yellow. Ah, this one then! Sisson calls triumphantly, holding up a rich, almost golden-colored skirt, thick band of embroidery at the border, Interlocking hexagons and other geometric shapes, long-stocked, drooping white flowers rising up from the bottom, bees stitched here and there on the soft-looking fabric. It's beautiful. And Rambu stalls reaching out for it automatically, fingers curling back into his palm as his ears flatten. Too eager. Too obvious. Can't let them know what you're feeling, entitled. Quickly drops his arm, and forces his voice even, as he says, I... I can't thank you enough for the offer, but I don't want to impose or... It's not an imposition, Crurito. Here. Sisson tells him kindly, moving across the room since Rambu refuses to enter, gently forces the skirt into his slack hands. Only lets go when he curls cautious fingers around the material. I promise it's no dust off my wings, but it's not going to upset me if you change your mind either. I just want you to be comfortable. Thank you. Rambu murmurs thickly, has to break eye contact with her because it's too much, having her wide, open, honest gaze on him, and he tips his head to the side so his bangs cover his face, starts backing out of her room. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go change. He ducks into Tubbo's empty room and closes the door with his back, setting sun throwing golden shafts of light through the window tinting everything warm where it touches, like liquid gold spilling through the air. Now that he's alone, Rambu can let his body shiver like it wants, nerves and anxieties pouring off him. But after a few seconds it stops, and he can relax out of his rigid posture. Taking a deep breath, he relishes how it expands his chest out, seeming like it's smothering the unpleasant feelings that still squirm around his ribs. You are not your family. Glad you're here. Not an imposition. Let's it go and feels better. Rambu steps out of his cargo pants and kicks them in the direction of his stuff. Slides the skirt on, hem of it settling just past his knees where it's probably floor length for Sisson. And the temperature difference is immediate. And Rambu has to give Tubbo this one. Already feels way more comfortable with nothing pressed super close to his skin and trapping excess heat. Swishes the material back and forth, intrigued with the way it moves, and spins in an experimental circle. The skirt flares out around him easily, fabric swirling past like a pinwheel. And that's fun. He likes that. And Rambu grins, does it once more for the hell of it. Before he leaves, he shrugs off his bomber and tosses it on the pallet, tucking his t-shirt into the high waistband of the skirt. Spares a glance down at himself, lovely golden fabric and tiny bees and snowy flowers catching at his knees, and doesn't think he looks half bad for once. Runs a thumb under his bracelet so it sits a little more comfortably around his wrist and heads out the door. Tubbo's waiting for him across the hall, 
slouched back against the wall with his lower set of hands tapping around at his handheld. Thumb of an upper one snagged between his teeth, looks up when he hears the door open, and grins, nodding his head in approval. Better. You know, yellow looks good on you. I know. Rambu sniffs, tipping his head back as he strides past, just for the way Tubbo will laugh, loud peals of it worming under his skin and settling warm against his bones like pulsating embers, like the gentle curl of solar flares out in space. It's still light outside when they step onto the front porch, Tubbo telling him the sun's not going to really set until much later. Closer to ten, he says. And Rambu's ears bob in excitement, not used to the sun staying in the sky that long. Anwil's local sun, Galal, is always just the barest light on the horizon. Nothing like the bright shine of Kissin overhead, beating down hot on the back of his neck as they descend the hill into town. As they're passing vibrant gardens along the road, Rambu sees a cluster of cheery yellow flowers standing tall in someone's yard, recognizes them as the same kind that were painted on his mug earlier, and he has to stop to ogle at them. Didn't realize how big they were. Most of the sturdy green stalks about the same height as him. What are these called? He asks Tubbo before he can get too far, and he turns around immediately, working his way back to Rambu and hums in understanding. Oh, those are called Helilanth, the uh, sunflowers, I think, in standard. Sunflower. Rambu repeats diligently, leaning forward to see if they have a sweet smell. And they don't really, but they're still pretty. And he takes a quick step back so he doesn't accidentally touch one. Wary of whoever's yard this is, knows how to mind his manners. And gapes when Tubbo asks... Do you want one? What? N no, I mean, it's, um, it's not polite. I don't know whose it is. Rambu stammers, watching in growing horror as Tubbo steps up and starts trying to break one off from the stem. Yanks on his arm, frantically hissing. Tubbo? Chill, it's my Tia's house. She's not gonna care. Shit. Fucker is tough. Here, can you use your claws? Tubbo moves his hands to give Rambu space to step in. But he's still unsure, darting worried glances at the house set into the hillside, and figures Tia has to be some family relation. Stumbles forward when Tubbo drags him in with one of his hands. Come on, you goof, stop worrying. Wow, never considered that before, what a concept. Rambu thinks sardonically, but lets Tubbo wrap one of his hands around Ronbu's, pulling them up to the abused section of plant stock, and then pantomimes a cutting gesture. Rolling his eyes, Ronbu runs the edge of one of his claws through the stock, slicing a neat line in it so it topples off effortlessly, falling into one of Tubbo's waiting hands. You know, I always forget you can, like, disembowel me. Tubbo jokes, turning the sunflower around in his hands, picking off extra leaves so it's just a clean stem, and then flicks his eyes up to meet Ronbu's, motions for him to come closer. Lean down for me? Arambu does, like an idiot, lets Tubbo brush wayward hair over his left ear, tucking the sunflower into place gently, fingers combing lightly through his hair before pulling away. And Rambu shivers, mind latching onto that sensation and running away with it, bombarding him with fantasies of those same fingers carefully pulling sections together in a braid, world spinning around him when Tubbo murmurs, There, perfect. The rest of the walk into town is a blur. Rambu lost in daydreams. Keeps reaching up to check and make sure the sunflower is still there. That it's real. Can't believe when it is every single time. Perfect. He called you perfect? Looked you dead in your mismatched eyes and called you perfect? You. The biggest fuck-up disaster in existence. His mind keeps repeating in a daze. Eyes staring, unseeing, yet entirely focused on the red dirt road in front of him, transfixed, watching his toes press into the warm earth. When they do get into downtown Avalar, Rambu's shaken out of his stupor, caught up in how beautiful the town looks. Thick garlands of flowers and colorful ribbons stretching wide over the road, paper lanterns decorated with hand-painted suns strung out at regular intervals. 
There's already a troupe of musicians playing, their music rising lively and bouncing into the rich blue sky, clouds just starting to go molten gold in the light of the setting sun. Ah, made it in time. Come on, Boo Boy. Tubba calls excitedly, looping a set of arms around one of Ron Boos as he drags him off to a crowded section of town, worms his way through the throng of people without a single care. Rambu offers quiet apologies as they squeeze past, gets brilliant grins, and a few hearty slaps on the back for his troubles, is a little bewildered and sore by the time Tubbo comes to a stop outside a colorful booth. The setup for the game is simple. Take an underweighted ball and try and knock milk bottles over, and Rambu hangs back and watches for a minute, tail curling behind him as he sees children and Tubbo fail over and over again despite the simple math involved. When it's his turn, Rambu tosses the ball around in his hands, getting a pretty good estimate of its mass. Ignores Tubbo harassing him from the sidelines for taking too long, does the quick calculation for where he needs to hit and how much force to use, smirks as the entire stack topples in one hit. Tubbo gapes at him, gaggle of kids cheering Rambu on as he spins the second ball on the tip of one of his claws, simpering over all the noise. What? Like it's that hard? Fuck off, bitch. Tubbo mouths at him, shaking his head with a grin. Crouches down to listen to some question Lalas has. Keeps shooting Rambu glances out of the corner of his eye, clearly wanting to let him know he's still paying attention, that he's still there. It's incredibly kind, but it's not going to stop Rambu from rubbing Tubbo's face into the dirt more with his clear superiority. And he's not really sure he's going to make it, but Rambu throws his second toss with only a quick look over his shoulder. He grins wide and smug, hearing another stack come tumbling down. Hot streak of pride igniting warmth in his chest with the way Tubbo looks at him. Awe and admiration and affection. He cares. He cares so much about you, no doubt. Proud of you. And the heady rush of endorphins has him tipping his head back in laughter. They head to the other game booths, doggedly followed by their swarm of kids, and no matter what it is, Rambu dominates it easily. Tries explaining that he's not magic, he's just good at mental math, to Healy and Magnola. But they won't believe him, untangle ribbons from their hair and ask to braid his. Rambu's entire face flushes all the way to his hairline, tail poofing out in embarrassment as he stutters his way through excuses, manages to get them to leave off, but they insist on him keeping the ribbons. Say it's for good luck or something. He knots them around his right wrist and ruffles shaking hands through his hair. Heart pounding fast, even though he knows they couldn't have known. They're just kids. They probably haven't been taught about other cultures and their union customs yet. Ancients of the deep, though. But his pulse is racing. And Rambu makes the stupid mistake of finding Tubbo in the crowd mouth going dry as his brain supplies him with an image of a karyat braid in Tubbo's hair, tucked behind his left ear, violently shakes his head to clear it. Once it gets a little darker, the game booths close up, and restaurants, or not really, more like people's homes open up. Couples serving townsfolk from out kitchen windows and their front yards, tables drug outside and laden down with food that you're just expected to run up and take. There's no assigned seating or table numbers, apparently no protocol for who goes first. And Rambu knots his fingers together and apart, has no idea what he's supposed to be doing. Are you sure this is okay? Rambu whispers for the twelfth time, hovering awkwardly over Tubbo's shoulder while he fixes the two of them plates. Keeps popping bites of stuff in his mouth as he goes, absentmindedly nodding his head and answers for the twelfth time. Yes, boo. Now, do you eat turnip greens or not? Ender aren't really suited to vegetarianism. Most of his teeth too sharp and not super great at shredding plant matter. Bits of leaves getting caught in between them. But everything Rambu tries is delicious. Warm spices and peppery greens inside pillowy dough. Pungent leaves wrapping up savory mushroom hashes. Fresh-baked seed bread. Ripe summer berries and, of course more honey wine than he knows what to do with. I looked it up before we left HQ, and it should be fine for you to drink. Just go slow, I guess. Tebo tells him, 
passing over a ceramic mug filled with the amber liquid. And Rambu cautiously sticks his tongue in it, getting nothing but the faintest burn of alcohol and nothing more. Takes a cautious sip and trills in surprise. It's sweet. It's honey wine. Tebo bitches back with a fond smile, taking a drink from his own mug. And Rambu swats him with his tail where they sit cross-legged in someone's front yard, finishing their dinner while Flaus and Taurus go running past playing tag in miniature versions of Tubbo's outfit, grass stains all over the linen of their shirts. It seems like half the town comes up to talk to them at some point or another, Tubbo introducing everyone as Tia or Tio or Preme, and they all greet Rambu enthusiastically, ask him how he's doing with what looks like genuine interest. Thank him for coming when he's the one that should be thanking them. But they always laugh whenever he tries, wave off his concerns with easy smiles. They're all so nice. He whispers the next time they have a second alone, and Tebo shrugs, shoveling a pile of sautéed greens in his mouth. Our town's small. But Rambu doesn't think that's just it. Watching people interact with one another. How, even though they all look different... They act like they're one family. A proper one. One that actually cares for each other. And despite the fact that he sticks out like a sore thumb, Rambu kind of gets the feeling he's included in that now. At least for tonight. He tips his head back and sighs. Smiles a little dopily at the pink clouds drifting past overhead. Warm wind ruffling through his hair. Caressing at the bare skin of his arms. Content, solid feeling settled in his limbs, in his bones. Pleasant heaviness pinning him down here to the earth. This moment? To someone's gorgeous garden on Apidae. Sweet sound of voices and jaunty music rising into the twilight. You look happy. Tebo murmurs softly. Words only for you. Eyes only for you, too. Rambu realizes when he turns to him. Quiet, gentle contemplation in his gaze. And he smiles, unforced and genuine, just like when he responds honestly. I am. It's amazing that it's not a lie. And it really isn't. Rambu following along at Tubbo's side with a spring in his step he's not sure he's ever had. Or maybe has only ever felt very briefly. Mind pulling up memories of sitting and dying of heat stroke but listening avidly as Tebo told him story after story. Of the frozen rush of teleporting an inch within range, the all-consuming euphoria when he finally caught him. Just every memory of Jiayuet, reading aloud along the lake shore and dancing barefoot in the cargo hold and Tebo sleeping in his arms. Rambu's not naive enough to assume it's going to last, but he enjoys it while he can, returns the waves others give him, holds his borrowed skirt out for a group of cooing girls to admire, flowers tucked behind their ears as well, gets roped into a game of tag with Healy and Taurus and Flos, stands waiting for one of them to come rushing at him and blinks out of existence at the last second, comes dropping from the ether behind them, howling in laughter. With most everyone finished eating, the music picks up sharply, people cheering as they start to pair off, Entire town square evolving into a dance floor within seconds. And Rambu watches wide-eyed as dancers spin in fast circles. It's incredible watching them move. How light and graceful they are on their feet. Iridescent wings flaring in time to the music and catching the lights from the lanterns overhead. The dancers beating them to soar through the air as part of the routine. Tebo did that once. Nearly drug you over. He remembers with a grin bouncing on the tips of his toes in time to the music. And Rambu loves dancing, would be out there in a heartbeat, but he's not sure if he's allowed to right now, silently bemoaning his lack of wings, when a hot grip wraps around his arm. Come on! Tebo laughs, dragging him out to the center of the square, moves Rambu into position, and takes his hands with his upper ones, lower set draped loosely around his waist starts to slowly lead them in the same dance everyone else is doing, likely thinking he needs to give Ronbu time to learn it. Well, he should know better, because Ronbu's been watching the dancers for a few minutes now and has most of the steps memorized. Picks their pace up to Tubbo's delight, 
twirls him under an arm as fast and tight as everyone else, feet moving quick over the cobblestones in time to Tubbo's, sliding past one another and catching their hands together on the other side, reeling the other back in like dual orbiting suns. Rambu twists through their arms again and again, never gets lost, never gets dizzy, keeps his eyes trained on Tubbo's as they spin across the square, mindful of the people flying overhead, laughing breathless and wild when the song comes to an end, joins in as the crowd claps and cheers, gets into a new position as another song starts beating to life. The other dances he has to learn as he goes, but Rambu's a quick study, finds himself easily falling into place for line dances, grabs hands and is led through the square with a stranger on either side, spins through the arms of a dozen partners, always finds his way back to Tubbo for paired dances though, seems like no one else is there when he turns around. He doesn't mind in the slightest, not when it means their fingers are laced together, Rambu moving across the uneven street like it's something he's always done, skirt flaring out around his knees as he twirls in fast circles, bare feet kicking up in time to the jumping music same as everyone else, growing lightheaded and hot in the sticky summer night. In between songs, he and Tubbo stumble giggly and hazy back to where the food's still laid out, grab snacks and new mugs of honey wine, the sweet, cold taste of it hitting the spot like nothing else, has the world going fuzzy around the edges, makes Rambu's movements more fluid and carefree as he stops thinking so much. He ends up just spinning the two of them around in circles in someone's yard, Tubbo ducking under his arms sloppily and their feet get tangled up together both of them falling over in a heap, lay splayed out on the cool grass and laugh until their sides hurt, until Tubbo starts making that rattling, humming noise Rambu loves. Rolling over on his side, Rambu smushes his face into an arm and smiles mushily at Tubbo's side profile scrunched up in hysterical laughter. How messy his hair's gotten from all the dancing. Color high on his cheeks and the tip of his nose, just like being stuck behind that power panel, snatches of him from in between cables. Most beautiful thing you've ever seen, the way he laughs. And his chest feels like it's overflowing with how much he feels for this one person. I love you, Rambu thinks helplessly. Kicking his feet up as he moves past Tubbo, skirt flowing up and out with the movement. Ancients, I love you so much spins and already knows there's going to be hands to catch him, impossibly warm fingers lacing through his, pulling him closer, closer than anyone else is. My sunshine, my caryad, love of my life, never going to leave you. Arambu sways on his feet, caught up and lost forever in those endless dark blue eyes. No one else, only you. I'm yours for the rest of eternity. Impulsively dips Tubbo and grins until it hurts, hearing the way he laughs. Reality is starting to feel a little weird. Rambu lost sense of his mental hallway a long time ago. Nothing in his head but prickling static and sunlight. As he hauls Tubbo back up, leans down to bring their foreheads together, trilling deep in his chest when he feels that achingly lovely ticklish sensation dragging over his horn, twists into the contact. Bo. He feels slip slow and warm out of his mouth. Absolutely no control over anything, and it's amazing. Feels like he's in a fever dream. Love you, love you, have I told you yet? Smiles at how languorously Tubbo blinks at him. Don't think I have, but I will. Laughing because his head feels extra really stupid, and everything's really warm and really nice, and he wants to. Bo. Hey, hi. Hi. Tubbo whispers back, mischievous grin on his face that makes a dimple appear, and wow, Rambu really loves him. Has he told him yet? He can't remember, and that's new. Usually he can't stop remembering, and fuck, he loves it. Getting distracted because Tubbo's saying something else. I think you might be a little drunk, drunk, drinks? Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Rambu agrees. Still a little confused as to what he's agreeing to. But Tubbo laughs, so it's fine. 
He loves him, and everything's fine again. Only moving back enough so they can keep dancing, Rambu wobbles, kinda unsteady on his feet. But Tubbo's there, and Rambu loves him, spinning as fast as they can around the square. Bugs singing in the night, and undercutting the music that beats in Rambu's ears like a second heartbeat, and he loves him. And it gets kinda lost after that. Everything blurring together in a glowing sweep of fingers laced through his and swirling yellow skirts. Hot press of bodies close together under the purple of a summer night. Sweet burn of alcohol down his throat and the cloying stickiness of honey on his tongue. And after holding on for so long, Rambu's mind eventually buckles and everything tips into oblivion. Lesson 27 do not reminisce on what you have lost, for it will weigh you down. Rambu skips down the hall, doesn't care that Maliri would be swatting at him or holding him back by his shoulder to get him to stop. He just can't contain how excited he is. Because Mama specifically asked for him to be brought to her, sent her personal guard to come fetch him from morning lessons, won't let Maliri keep him, despite how she clearly wanted to. Bounding ahead of the guard, Rambu doesn't really need to have her following to know how to get to Mama's room. Goes this way enough on his own. Could also teleport right there if he needed to. But Mama wanted that to stay a secret between them. Don't let your father know. Mama's voice whispers to him. And Rambu falters like he always does, trying to figure out why Mama wanted to lie to father. Thought Karyads weren't supposed to keep things from one another. It's probably because he worries about her he thinks, coming to a jumping stop outside Mama's door. You tire her out, and he just wants her to get better. And he deflates a little, knowing that's the most likely case. B but Mama likes seeing me, Rambu reminds himself, scooting out of the way so the guard can let him in. And as soon as the door opens a fraction, he squirms past her legs, dashing across the room and teleports those last few feet dropping out of thin air a little too high up and bounces wildly on the bed. Mama! He giggles, shoving wayward hair out of his face and freezes immediately, brows pinching down in worry with how pale Mama looks, almost like a ghost, and he scrambles up the bed towards her. M -m Mama? What? What's wrong? Her eyes don't even open head listlessly turning in his direction, and he settles on his knees by her shoulder, still can hardly hear her as she whispers, Rambu, my son, my littlest. Hi, Mama. Rambu says, just as soft, hesitantly reaches a hand out and feels at her forehead, doesn't really know what he's supposed to be checking for. But her skin feels weird under his fingers, and he pulls back quickly. Are you okay? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mama hushes through cracked lips, fingers twitching against her blankets like they're trying to move to touch him, but just can't find the energy to get up. I... I'm fine. C come here, darling. Rambu has to pick her arm up to wiggle under it. And it's hard. He's basically supporting all of it. And it thuds heavy over him. Like Mama doesn't have control over it anymore. He tucks his head on the edge of her chest and smiles when she leans down to press her nose into his hair. Shaky exhales leaving her throat. Ronbu. Ronbu, listen to me. Mama says, arm pulling him a little closer, fingers resting limply over his side and he reaches down to hang on to them, his hand too small to really fit in hers. I care for you so much. I care for you the most. Understand? You like me better than Resha? Rambu asks, a little bewildered, because everyone likes Resha better. But it makes sense. She's the heir, and he's not even a spare. He's... He's not really sure what he is, until Mama nods, jerkily. Yes, yes, darling. Rambu, my littlest. Never forget I care for you. I'm Mama's favorite, 
Rambu thinks in pride, wiggling closer, tipping his head up into hers happily. I won't, Mama. I have a really good memory. Want to hear this book I read yesterday? Later, darling. Okay? Just... And Mama heaves with a cough, jerks away sharply, and Rambu plops over without her there to support him, turns and looks at her in alarm. M Mama? N never... Never change, Rambu. Never... Mama loses her words again, and he scrambles upright, frantic, but he doesn't know what to do, has no idea how to heal someone, clutches at the blankets as she regains her breath. Don't let them... Don't let them get to you. Don't... Don't let them change you. Uh, okay. He agrees quietly, scared because he has no idea what's going on, doesn't know who they are, why he needs to stay away from them. And Mama raises a hand with what looks like great effort, starts fiddling with her karyad braid, and Rambu's eyes go wide as she undoes her bead, slipping it off the end so the braid begins to unravel. You are good and kind and and smart. Don't ever think you're you're not. Mama wheezes, reaches out her trembling hand towards him, and it collapses before it can get to him. But Rambu meets her halfway, doesn't understand why she presses her bead into his palm. I'll always be with be with you. I I don't Mama, are you go? Uh, um, are you going somewhere? Rambu asks in concern, looks down at the golden bead in his hands, runs careful claws over it, snaps his head up when Mama hushes. Yes, and I'm so, so sorry. I can't stay with you anymore. No, no, you can't. Rambu cries. Fingers curling harsh around the bead as he clutches them to his front. Scared, this is what Maliri always means. What will happen if he doesn't behave? Sit down. Stop fidgeting. Know how to behave. Bad things happen to children who cannot listen. I'm so sorry. Don't leave me! Rambu wails and scoots forward fast on his knees. Wants to be closer. Has to be closer. Don't leave. Please stay. Only one that looks at me. That listens? I don't want to be alone. Clicking hard in the back of his throat. Mama, please? Brows pinched in concentration. Mama lifts a shaking arm. Clammy, weak fingers brushing jerkily over his cheek. Frantic beeping picking up around them. I'm... I'm so sorry. I don't... I don't want to go. N then stay... Please? Rambu whimpers, one of his hands coming up to curl around her wrist, to keep her trembling hand on his face that much longer. And still, it feels like she's slipping out of his grasp, her voice nearly drowned out by the sound of people shouting loud behind them. I can't r remember me, okay? Promise me, Rambu. I, I promise... I promise. He sobs. I can be good. I can behave. Please don't leave. Don't go. Stay here. Stay with me. I'll be good. Rubs his face into her slackening hold. Don't go. Don't. Don't. Remember what I told you. Mama murmurs, head tipping to the side. And someone's yelling for him, but Rambu won't listen. Leans forward wildly to try and catch the words sighing out of her mouth. You are... You are good. You are... You deserve care. Love. I wish I... But he doesn't hear what she was going to say. Scooped up under the arms and torn from the bed. 
her wrist wrenched out of his hold as he's drug away, screaming at the top of his lungs as Mama disappears behind a crowd of people. The servants that grabbed him take him back to his room, talking fast about draw the bath and said it's not contagious, but... and how does he keep getting in there? Ignoring Rambu as he begs and pleads to be taken back so he can try and convince Mama to stay. But they won't listen, turn a deaf ear, and he panics. Keeping Mama's bead locked up in one fist, Rambu slashes out with the other, gouges lines across hands and faces, shrieks to try and drown out the cries of alarm, of pain, twists and squirms to break free, but they won't let him go, fling him in his room and slam the door shut. Rambu hits the ground hard and gets all the breath knocked out of him, room spinning around him as he gasps, makes it easier for the servants to grab him, haul him up and pin his arms behind his back, keep him from swiping at them as they draw the bath. They strip him down and threaten to bind his hands if he won't behave, and Rambu shrinks back, heart thundering loud in his ears as he lets them set him in the tub, hisses at the hot temperature and how hard they scrub. Soap accidentally drips down into his eyes, and he reaches up to scrub it away. Recoils when his hand gets slapped away, a servant girl glaring vehemently as she snaps. If you claw me again, you wretched little thing, I swear, and I'll watch your tongue. Another hushes, dumps a cup full of water over Rambu's head, and makes the soap run into his eyes more. But he refuses to scrub it away, sits there and shrinks into himself further, doesn't protest any more because he's bad. He messed up. Knows better than that. Maybe that's why Mama's leaving, because she's sick of him now, too. And that thought steals all the air from his lungs, makes icy chills race up and down his spine, and he keeps his head down throughout the rest of the bath. He'll be good from now on. He'll listen and do what they say, and then maybe Mama won't leave. Rambu's getting dried off keeps having to shift the bead from fist to fist so they won't see, when there's a loud knock on his door, and he whirls around, hopes it's Mama's guard come to get him again. But when one of the servants opens it, it's Father standing there. But he doesn't look right. He doesn't have his cape on, nor his crown, and Rambu blinks in confusion because he looks so strange without them. Smaller, somehow, but that's not what makes him worried. It's the look in his eyes. How empty they are, just like Mama's. Like all the lights have gone off inside of him. An empty husk of a shell, same as the bugs that molt them in the day setting. No one stops Rambu as he shuffles over in his towel, hesitates before wrapping his fingers around a couple of fathers like he did with Mama. Doesn't want him to leave, too. Squeezes a little as he looks up at him. Father? Slowly. Haltingly, Father turns his head down to look at him, and it's weird, but Rambu doesn't think he's really seeing him. Sways closer and tugs at his hand. I'm here. I'm good. I behave. Don't leave me either. I care for you, so don't, um, don't leave me, okay? I care for- And Rambu watches Father's lips shape the words, can hear them in his mind, but they don't make any sense. Don't register. That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not. His legs buckle, collapsing to the ground without anything to support him, screams until he can't anymore. Mama's carryad bead burning into his palm like a brand, just like father's words sear themselves into his mind. A scar he's never going to get rid of. Your mother's dead. It is almost uncomfortably hot, scorching like sun rays or fire right at his fingertips, but it's everywhere, completely enveloping him where he floats in an abyss, feels like maybe he's curled up at the center of some star, safe millions of light years away where no one will ever find him. That sounds nice, to be lost for a while, but not alone, he thinks, doesn't want to be by himself, not anymore. Wants to be lost with someone that knows him, that understands. Arm curling around the solid shape of something else at the center of this inferno. Nuzzling down into wispy pieces of nebula that float past, tickling at his nose. 
He can't help it when he sneezes a little, the motion jarring him and sending him slipping out of the sun, dropping slowly back into a body that's still heavy with sleep and a mind that's struggling to pull itself together. And Ronbu groans, attempts to bury his face in his pillow. Except when he goes to do it, it's not a pillow his face makes contact with. It's undeniably a head of hair, and he pries an eye open, stares stupidly at chestnut brown curls for a long time before it registers in his clunky brain what, who he's looking at. Fuck, shit, what have you done? Get up! Rambu tries to move back fast, but as soon as he puts pressure on an arm to leverage himself up, his center of gravity shifts and he goes crashing back down, accidentally falling on Tubbo as whatever surface he's on sways wildly. Tubbo makes several indignant noises, rolling over and slapping at Rambu to get off him, but there's nowhere for him to go like he's caught in a cocoon. And in his confusion, he keeps slipping back into Tubbo, like the universe is punishing Rambu for, well, a lot of deserved things, really. The only way any semblance of order gets restored is when Tubbo flips over and loops an arm around his waist, dragging him back down for good, hooks their legs together to stop his squirming, and mumbles into his front. Fucking stop. But, 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 I, Tub... Is all Rambu manages to get out before pain is exploding behind his eyes and he crumples over. It takes too much energy to force himself away, so he gives up, sagging into Tubbo's touch and whines pathetically at how his head is pounding. It's too early, Tubbo grumbles, burying his head somewhere under Ronbu's chin. Other arm, draping over his side, seems perfectly content to go back to sleep like this. But despite the fact that it feels like he's being lobotomized with a drill, Ancients of the Deep, Rambu knows this is a bad idea, struggles to say, I, I, shouldn't, um, move to, uh, bed? No. Tebo demands, muzzily, arms tightening like he really thinks it's going to be hard convincing Rambu to stay, twists his head to the side and says a bit more clearly, mm, comfy. Bo. Rambu tries to argue, and then, very rudely, gets slapped in the mouth with an antenna. Shakes his head back, which is a mistake, ow. But there's nowhere to go, and he keeps getting lightly hit in the face. Bitches, half-heartedly. You're just... the worst. Tebo hums out something that is almost a laugh, but is mostly just sleepy noises that buzz warmly through Rambu's chest where they're touching. Mm, colon bullshit on that one, boss man. It's true. Rambu insists grumpily, tips his chin up, and manages to trap Tubbo's assailant antenna against the top of his head, mumbles into his hair with no malice. Detest you. Not what you said last night. Tubbo says around a huge yawn, most of his sentence lost to incomprehensible noises, and Rambu huffs out a pained giggle. Headache really starting to kick up a notch, slips his eyes closed and murmurs tiredly. Yeah, what did I say then? That I dislike you, that I ab abhor you, or you told me you love me. And Rambu stops breathing. His eyes snap wide open where they were half-lidded with sleep just a moment ago, stares unseeing at a swath of colorful fabric that narrows down with encroaching darkness as his heart thunders wildly, every instinct he has screaming at him to run, to get away. Something bad's coming. Flee while you still can. What did you do? What did you say? Nightmare. Not real. Not real. Can't be. Get out. Get away! Tabo sits up abruptly, concerned pinched to his face as he squints his eyes in the morning light, hand fumbling around at Rambu's front, spreading out over where his heart is currently trying to break out of his ribcage. Holy shit, you okay? What's wrong? Are you having a panic attack? Choking on an attempted inhale, Rambu feels like his entire chest cavity is filled up with magma, burning through his bones so what's left crumples inwards. Can't get air into his lungs, can't make his mouth work. Stares up at Tubbo in dazed panic and feels like he's dying. Can't be real. 
has to be a nightmare. You didn't. You couldn't. What did you say to him? You were never supposed to tell him. Uh, okay, okay, Boo. Boo, I, I need you to listen to me, okay? You're fine. It's gonna be okay, I promise. Teppo insists, in a shaky voice, he's trying to smooth out into something more calm. Leans down and strokes a set of fire-bright fingers across Rambu's cheek, and it kills him. You are okay. You're safe, and you're not wherever you think you are. You're here with me. That's the problem. Can't be happening. Isn't real. You finally snapped. Was only a matter of time. Trapped in delusions for the rest of your life. And Rambu makes a strangled noise. Tries to move away from Tubbo. The specter of him. This isn't real. You're insane. You've always been insane. Thousand cracks in your mind that lead nowhere. Fuck. Boo. Hey. Hey. I'm right here. I'm not gonna hurt you. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're not real. Go away. Black stained concrete and wavy shape in front of you. I came back. I came back for you. Liar. It's me. It's Tubbo. Your partner. Your... My Cariad, my sunshine, my everything. Don't go. Stay with me and I'll stay with you. Not real. Not real. Get a grip. Just breathe, okay? It's okay. Dizzying slide of black walls all the way to the ground. Feet angling out over the side. One nudge. That's all you need. Can't. Won't. Not again. It's gonna be okay. You know I love... Liar. 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 Shut up. Rambu finally gasps heaves, like he's going to throw up, just trying to get air into his oxygen-starved body. Feels like he's spinning off into the abyss. One wrong move, and over the side he goes. Just shut up. You're not real. You're not. You're, you're not. You're not. Leave me alone. Leave me. His frantic protests get cut off as a weight thuds into him. Two sets of arms wiggling under his back holding him tight, keeping him grounded, keeping him from slipping over the edge. And he doesn't think. Fists his claws in the back of Tubbo's shirt and holds on for dear life as reality pitches like freefall. I'm right here, Rambu. Tubbo mumbles into the crook of his neck, twists his head until he's tucked under Rambu's chin, just like jungle insects singing around you all night, warm, comforting weight pinning you down, think you might love him in the dawn light. And I'm so sorry. So sorry, Boo. But I'm right here. I'm right here. Rambu keens, long and low. Aching pain racing down his arms and settling like dead weights in his fingertips. Desperate urge to sink them into something. Need something solid, something sturdy. Have to hold on, slipping away one breath at a time. But there's nothing, and he's scared. That this is it. This is over. That as soon as he's calmed down, Tubbo's going to look him in the eyes and tell him, I know you love me, but I can't feel the same way. Care for you, but not like that. Never like that. And a wailing cry tears its way out of his throat. He can't be alone again. He can't. Not after finally realizing what it means to be cared for. But he's going to be. Couldn't keep his fucking mouth shut. Couldn't keep those damned doors locked and it's all crumbling down around him. Tubbo's going to leave him after this. And the specters are going to find him, sink their claws in and haul Ronbu kicking and screaming back to the ledge. Force him over the side and gum up his mind so he can't think, can't calculate, can't stop the ground rushing back up to greet him. Good riddance. No one would mourn for you, shadow on the wall. No one's ever cared, and no one ever will. You're going to die alone. Boo, please, just... Breathe. In one, two. Out one, two. Shit. I love you, Boo. Love you so much. Please, just breathe. Vibrates against his neck. Shakes through him like an earthquake. And he sobs, clicking hard in the back of his throat. Inhales staggering in his lungs as he begs. Stop. Stop lying to me. J just go away. This hallucination is worse than every other combined. And Rambu's just waiting for the knife to sink in. For this specter of Tubbo to pull back and look down at him, smiling nasty and cruel. Laugh at how stupid he is. How naive. For thinking he could ever be loved. And Tubbo does pull back, sharply. 
and Rambu cries pathetically, seeing the thunderous expression on his face. And it's worse than the brutal amusement, more accurate to how he'd react. Furious and livid and disgusted, do you think you have a right to do this after everything you did? After what your father's father did to my people, my planet? Wish I'd never met you, should have let him shoot me, I hate I love you, and I'm not lying. I'm real, and I'm here, and I love you. Tebo says, with all the steadfast, deadly accuracy of a photon cannon discharging. Feels like a hole gets blasted straight through Ronbu, like the world has been ripped out from under his feet. I told you last night, but I'll tell you as many times as you need to hear it until you'll believe me. I love you, Ronbu. I love you so much. Told me last night? What is he talking about? Can't remember. Everything's hazy, dancing, and his smile, and there's nothing there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Rambu thinks in a panic, scrambling through his maze, trying to find some coherent memory after Tubbo mentioned he was drunk. Drink drunks drinks. And comes up with nothing. His claws flex spastically. Hates having gaps in his mind like this. Worries and needles and picks at the ragged hole from last night. Gaping spot where a door is supposed to be. But at least this one doesn't bleed around the edges. Not like the gaping black maw that leaks dark liquid out when he's not paying attention. Shakes his head and stammers frantically. Y you're lying. You, you, you can't, wouldn't, not possible. I'm not lying. I told you I'd never lie to you again. Tebo says gently, reaches down so very, very slowly with one of his hands and brushes wayward hair out of Ronbu's eyes. It's okay if you don't believe me. I still love you even if you don't. And it's okay, Boo. It's okay. I'll be here. I'm not going anywhere else. I won't leave you, promise, so take your time. His fingers trail slowly off Ronbu's face, like the last rays of the setting sun. Don't leave, please stay. And before they're gone completely, Ronbu lurches forward, desperate to keep the contact, desperate to hope. Is this real? Does it matter? It does. Trust him. Can't. Scared. Liar. Swallows hard when Tubbo goes to cup his cheek. Stutters. Are you... Are you... you sure? Yes. It's so immediate that Rambu almost doesn't process it. Blinks wide eyes up at Tubbo, who smiles at him softly. Hair rumpled from sleep and falling messily in his eyes. Morning light hitting bright on the planes of his face. Adoration in his eyes, as he looks at Ronbu like he's worth everything. And he's not. Is barely worth the resources he has to consume to stay alive. Honestly, probably does more harm than good. So Tebo has to be mistaken. Must not be thinking clearly. Might still be a little inebriated, even. And Ronbu shakes his head. How? Why do you... Why do you think that you... Because you're kind? Tebo says as he tips his head to the side, shaking curls out of his eyes, thumb sweeping out in slow arcs under Ronbu's eye. Because you care so much about me? About the universe? The people in it? You have such a big heart, Boo. It's incredible. Lie. There's nothing worthwhile in you. Never has been, little shadow. Whispers over the top of his head. And Ronbu shivers about to tell her to go away, but her cackling disappears like mist burning off in the heat of the day when he hears. You make me so happy just by being around, putting up with all the crap that you do, and I can never thank you enough for deciding it was worth it to come with me. Does he not know? How could he not? Easiest thing you've ever done, like breathing, like teleporting. It wasn't a hard choice. Rambu murmurs, Thinks he might be drunk still, with how his head doesn't feel like it's attached to his body. Reaches a trembling hand up and wraps his fingers lightly around Tubbo's wrist. Don't go. Please stay. Ancients, it was never a hard choice. I'd go with you anywhere, Bo. Tubbo huffs out a wet laugh, 
ducks his head and looks up through his bangs, shy smile on his lips. See? That's what I'm talking about. How could I not love you? Easily. So, so very easily. I, I love how smart you are. Teba whispers, cutting him off in the sweetest way, rest of his hands flitting down to make their home carting through Rambu's hair, scratching around the base of his horns, fingers trailing up the left one. Fuck, you're so smart, Boo. So smart. You think up things I could never even imagine. And the way your brain works is just... It's amazing. Even with the cracks? Even with the chained doors and the skeletons and the specters? Even though you're insane, he thinks you're worth something. Thinks you're amazing. Does he really? I love how much passion you have for learning and just... Life, I guess. I love getting to see your honest reactions. Love knowing what makes you excited and what you enjoy. And I'm so happy I get to share it with you. Thank you for sharing it with me. Knows you down to your bones. Dangerous, stupid, gonna hurt you. But he's not. Never again. He promised. Cares for you so much. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe it's real. You're so strong, Rambu. So strong. You've been through so much and you're still here. You're still trying. And I admire that so much. It, it helps me be strong too. To know you're here. I hope I do that for you. I just... I love you so much. I, I've never met anyone else like you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Loved you for so long. No one else but you. I'm yours for the rest of eternity. Stay by your side forever and... You'll stay by mine. Oh, ancients, how? How does he? Can't be real, but it is. Loves you too. You're one in a million, Rambu. And I love you all the more for it. Tebo tells him, like he means it. And it's sitting next to him on a bar stool. You're kinda awesome, you know that? And it's dark, blood-stained concrete, but you mean more than the whole galaxy. And it's standing on a red dirt road, bent down sunflower behind your ear. There, perfect. And Rambu breaks down, sobbing throat constricting tight around the sounds, body unsure how to process the amount of emotions storming through him like a rupture in the earth's surface, dragging molten magma out with it, but it's not bad. It's warm, and it's grounding, and it's... What did I say, darling? Deserve love. You'd know when you'd found them. Don't doubt yourself. Always believed in you. Always cared for you, my littlest one. Fuck! Sh shit I I'm so sorry. Shouldn't have- uh, Shit. So s sorry. Should have known better. T too much. Uh, I know. Sorry. So s Tebo's apologies peter out as Rambu hauls him down, snakes his arms under his wings so he won't hurt them when he crushes them together, crying and giggling and generally sounding completely unhinged as he tries to say, <laughs> No. N no. I I'm- I'm so happy. The last bit of his sentence breaks off abruptly as a hysterical sob shakes out of his mouth, and Rambu twists his face into the crook of Tubbo's neck, feels how fast his pulse is going, and lets the heat he radiates melt through him. And it's okay now. It's okay for him to enjoy this. Whispers, terrified, but giddy. I, I love you. Will he? Won't he regret? What did you do? Assuming, projecting, naive, insane, idiot. I love you too. And Rambu cries, so deliriously happy. Never thought he'd ever get to hear those words spoken to him. One hand flying up to cup the back of Tubbo's head, trembling claws carting carefully through his hair. Ancients, Rambu's going to get to braid Tubbo's hair. Tubbo's going to braid his and he sputters out a series of nonsense noises, tail worming free to curl possessively around one of Tubbo's legs, deep, trilling purr rattling in his chest. Cariad, 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 love of my life, I'm the love of his, my one and only, my sunshine, my heart. Love him, love him so much. Didn't know you purred. Tubbo murmurs, hands still playing through Rambu's hair, and he shivers. So incredibly glad now it's as long as it is. Can't wait to feel the weight of a braid tucked behind his ear. 
Mm, you're really like a house cat. <laughs> Shut up. Rambu laughs wetly, thudding the side of his head gently into Tubbo's. Here's the smile in his voice when he starts singing that horrible song from George's home planet. What's new, pussycat? Whoa. Stop! Rambu complains loudly with a smile, nuzzling his head into the underside of Tubbo's chin, gets him to break off his singing in a fit of laughter, and it devolves into something like a tickle fight, the two of them hitting and slapping at each other in the confines of Tubbo's hammock, sending it swaying wildly. Rambu wheezes when a set of Tubbo's hands finds his sides, can't get away from him so he flicks his tail across Tubbo's bare feet, finally gets him to leave off with a jumping shriek as he collapses to the side, still giggling a little. Okay, okay. Truce? I suppose. Rambu draws, twisting to face him better. Reaches out because he can. He's allowed to do this now. And strokes his fingers across Tubbo's cheek. Feels it when they lift in a grin, dark blue eyes shuddering as he mumbles. Love you, you dork. I love you too. He whispers back. Still can't believe this is real. That this is his to have. Smooths his hand out to rest on the back of Tubbo's neck. Long fingers questing up into his hair as Tubbo sighs contently. Shifting back into the touch. Love you. And you love me. Rambu thinks, sleepily, tipping his head so their foreheads are resting together. Caryads, unified pair. Easily sliding back into unconsciousness' warm embrace, knowing he's safe and cared for. Nestled in the arms of the person that's going to always love him, no matter what. Rambu can't say how long he dozes for, but he doesn't think it's long. Roused from where he's floating, bathed in sunlight, by rapid fire knocking at the door. Sisson's voice, jumping fast and nervous in Apian, gets Tubbo to lurch upright, scrambling out of the hammock before Rambu can even ask. Bo, what's time to go? Boo, get your shirt. Tubbo calls hurriedly, stuffing any loose clothing into his duffel without much care. And Rambu rolls out of the hammock immediately, lands on shaky knees but stays upright trips over to his own stuff and jumps at the next round of frantic knocking. Festa! Tubbo yells, slings his duffel over his shoulder and scoops his boots up in a free hand, jerks the door open, and around him, Rambu catches snatches of Sisson in a nightgown, hair undone and set of hands fiddling with it nervously as she says, The early Melly, you have to go. All of Rambu's hair stands on end, tail poofing out because he understands now. Enforcers. Snatches his own boots up in one hand and twists to his feet, darting quick to stand behind Tubbo. Soft touch at his shoulder to let him know he's ready. Tubbo doesn't turn to look at him, but his antenna flick. Know you're there. As he asks Sisson desperately, Are you going to be okay? Yes, now go. Ami Kamea, everyone will keep them as long as they can, but you need to go. Sisson insists, reaching out to drag him into a quick hug their antenna only brushing the barest amount before she's pulling back, looking at Tubbo, teary-eyed. I'm so sorry, Melly. I'm so sorry we can't do more. Don't apologize. It's my fault, and... Tubbo stops himself, shrinks down at the furious, heart-breaking expression Sisson gives him, relents. It it's just how things are right now, but I'll figure something out, Amma. Promise. She cups his cheek with one of her hands and Rambu really feels like he's intruding, cuts his eyes away to give them some privacy, still hears how watery her voice is, though. I know. You're smart, Bo. You'll figure it out. N now get out of here, Melly. I'm all too, Amma. Rambu winces at how destroyed Tubbo sounds, can't stop himself glancing back to check on him, watches him scrub a hand into his eyes, Sisson sniffling hard. She steps back and gives Tubbo one last pat on the arm as he darts by, headed for the front door with Ronbu hot on his heels, and he waits behind Tubbo's shoulder as he peers out the window, checking the street out front for a bright flash of blue uniforms and sleek white plasma rifles, adrenaline snaking through his body and forcing him to wake up more. 
There's a gentle touch at Rambu's arm, and he glances over his shoulder, sees Sisson smiling sadly at him with tear tracks on her face, and he spins around, not sure what to do, stands there with his free hand hovering awkwardly. She doesn't take her hand off him just yet, squeezes his forearm very lightly, bright shape of her fingers curled around him, burning itself into his memory. I'm so glad I finally got to meet you, Kurito. Please stay safe, and keep watching out for my boy, okay? Of course. Rambu promises immediately. Only wavers slightly as he dips down to give her a one-armed hug, make sure to keep his horn away from her antenna and his claws from her wings. I thank you so much, Sisson. I'm going to, um, going to miss... Boo, we gotta go. Tubbo rushes over him, wrenching the door open, and Rambu drops his arm, turns away from Sisson with one final wave as he runs barefoot after Tubbo, out into the early morning light, something flying loosely around his knees, only then realizing what he still has on, and stalls, yelling, The skirt! Keep it! Sisson calls from the open doorway, waving his concern off with a set of hands and a bright smile that tints incredibly fond when he opens his mouth to argue. It suits you, Krurito. Now get out of here! Rambu isn't given a chance to respond. A hand and calluses he'd know anywhere wrapping around his wrist that tugs him forward sharply. Gets him moving again, stumbling behind Tubbo as they race down the red dirt road kicking up a cloud of dust that hangs long after them. They're not going down into Avalair, are skirting the top of the hill instead. But Rambu chances a look, anger sizzling through his veins, seeing the pearly white speeders parked in the square, the cluster of people surrounding them, wishes he had his blaster on him. Fuck you. You shouldn't be here. Leave these people alone. What I wouldn't give for five minutes and a plasma rifle. Steady hands. Good shot. Don't stand a chance. Eventually, they run out of road, and Tubbo flies up and over the top of someone's house. Rambu, half a second behind, fizzing into existence right as Tubbo looks back for him. Sharp grin, tugging his lips up as he heads off again, looping through fields of long grasses back to where they landed the Asachi. Anxiety curls sharp under Rambu's skin, but it's nothing bad. It's more excited than anything else hot swell of anticipation in his chest, through his ribs, knowing they're trying to avoid getting caught. That someone's going to be on their heels looking for them. Heady rush of knowing they're not going to get them. Too slow. Too late. Not good enough. Never good enough to catch you two. Rambu bounds through the yellow-green prairie, skirt snapping around his knees, feet moving fast under him, muscles bunching and contracting, propelling him forwards, Warm wind in his hair and striking against his face. Smiles wild and with too many teeth, chasing after Tubbo's back. With his gossamer wings and mess of erratic curls, slightly mad cackles flying out to get lost in the brilliant blue sky. I've got your back and you've got mine, Rambu thinks as they clatter up the cargo ramp. Tubbo hurling his stuff in a corner before he scrambles up the ladder chute. It's you and me and me and you he knows. Dropping down in his chair across from Tubbo, gets the weapon systems up, just in case. I love you. Smiles at where Tubbo's bouncing in his seat, excess adrenaline making him jumpy. And somehow, some way, you love me too. And he cuts his eyes across to Ronbu as they take off, everything he's ever wanted smiling back at him. And I wouldn't have it any other way, Cariad, husband of mine.